Nick Forum 2017 at the MGM National Harbor in Maryland. I'm Doug Simon, CEO of DS Simon Media. My guest, Ron Parker, CEO of the Executive Leadership Council. He just gave a very important presentation. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, Doug, for hosting us. Yeah, one of the things you pointed out that is really shocking and makes you take a moment, of the Fortune 500 CEOs, only four of them are African-American males. So what are you doing to try and change that? Well, it is uh, somewhat interesting in the year of 2017 that we only have four African-Americans who are CEO, males who are CEOs of, uh, of Fortune 500 companies. What we're doing is within the EOC is that we have a CEO academy that is taught by the existing black CEOs with the sole purpose of trying to fulfill the pipeline of talent, knowing that some of these individuals like Ursula and Ken Chenault and Ken Frazier and as well as Bernard Tyson will be moving on as they move out of those roles. Sure. We are using them as the deans of this academy to teach the next generation as to what are some of the nuances of being a successful black CEO in today's environment. And also create a pipeline and take away some of the excuses about not available candidates because exactly. you have more people trained. Exactly, and, ready to go. and you're looking at the fact that the black consumer spends $1.3 trillion in goods and services. And as we try to impress upon the millennial generation that they too can aspire to these senior level private sector jobs, it's important to have role models like Ken, like, like um, uh, Marvin Ellison at JCPenney, mm -hmm. like Bernard Tyson, for them to aspire to. And do you think there's some changing attitudes, especially among millennials, the younger said, I know we use the M word quite a bit, that might create a better outcome in the future going forward? I think so. At, at early on, I was somewhat skeptical of the millennials, but I think they're very much like the boomers. They are assessing organizations based upon their footprint, their, their physical, digital, and, and social footprint out in the community. The intelligence that we have from our institute is that these millennials are looking at organizations and determining what are they doing in the social spaces, not only around their products, their services and their professional opportunities, but what are they doing for the environment? What are they doing for communities? What are they doing for education? What are they doing for the good of the planet in addition to goods and services that they provide to their uh, consumers? Yeah, one of the things you spoke about that seems really smart is taking this issue out of just the diversity pigeonhole and actually putting it in the C-suite with the CEO. You've started CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion and getting CEOs to take the pledge. Can you tell us about that? Yes, we're uh, so pleased that uh, being led by Tim Ryan of PwC, this initiative of CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion, where we thought we would get about 150, and we made that announcement in our initial launch back in June of this year. We now have, Doug, over 300 plus CEOs who have signed to the pledge to do th three things. One, to have the tough conversations around race and other issues that affect underrepresented groups inside of corporate America. There's a productivity play there. There's an engagement play mm -hmm. there. Two, to be able to share best practices. Normally companies are competitive and they don't like to share information that they think has an advantage. The third one is to do unconscious bias training mm -hmm. because we all have unconscious biases and they're trying to make sure that they are preparing their particular organizations for the 21st century leaders who will be emerging through that millennial pool that we talked about earlier. It's so important that you're doing that. Now, of those 300 and the ones that you want to sign up, do they? how large a company do they have to be? Do they be publicly traded, Fortune 500? Are you just trying to create involvement across the board? Good question. This well, Initially, we start out with the Fortune 500. We've secured over 300 of those individuals, wow. CEOs, not yeah. their CHROs right. or chief diversity officers. But we're also looking at academic institutions. Here coming up in uh, this month, in October, the CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion is going to be actually going out to college campuses. Perfect. And having a discussion with some of the universities and colleges and some of the students who are there as to what their responsibilities will be as leaders as they move out of college into the world of work. And if we think we can impress upon them the broader level of responsibilities beyond the P&L, beyond market share, mm -hmm beyond growing shareholder value, that we will create a holistic leader entering the workplace in the 21st century. And at risk of trying to correct you, you know, it's not just beyond the P&L, it's an issue that really pertains and directly affects the P&L. I mean, you talked about $1.3 billion 
of expenditure in the African American community, exactly. you've got to be representing that to go there in the future. Exactly. And what we're finding that these millennials are making pre employment decisions mm -hmm. based upon the broader aspect of what a company is engaged in beyond just the normal metrics of market share, profitability, and uh, shareholder return. They're making those decisions on the things that are in the world of social, good social, global corporate responsibility. Yeah, so it sounds like if they want to do good, do well, they're going to have to start doing some good. Thanks so much for being with Thank us. Thank you, Doug, for having me.